Notts County, who've started the season so well, to Ashton Gate, where the departure of Alan Dix has left Bristol City with more than their fair share of problems. After the departure of Alan Dix 13 days ago, Bristol are now advertising the vacant manager's job. But with wide open spaces on the terraces at Ashton Gate for today's fixture against Notts County, does the Bristol chairman, Stephen Q, begin to regret the departure of Alan Dix? Very much so. And let me make it quite clear, I did not, and we did not want him to leave the club. Uh, we did not kick him upstairs or offer for him to go upstairs. We offered him the general managership, which, uh, which is a job I feel this club needs um, anyway. And I've thought about that for at least two years. Alan has known I've thought about that, and I really wanted him to do that job. But he, in his wisdom, decided not to accept. But you are in a situation now without a win, bottom of the second division, and without a manager. Yes. And that's obviously not a happy situation. Not a happy situation, but we hope things will get better. But it wasn't to be a happy afternoon, despite early promise. Bristol City shaving up again, Jimmy Mann. Oh, a really good shot from Mann. And it was all that Abramovich could do to bundle that one away. But a really testing shot from the central midfield player. Eddie Kelly. Oh, the back heel was neat, but he's put his team into trouble. Now, Tom Ritchie. Alan Hay, the fullback's in the box. Mabbott's there too. That's Mabbott! Oh, what a good effort. The little man Mabbott stole in front of the big defender and had a free header who put it straight into the chest of Abramovich. Things started to go wrong, though, after half an hour. Big David Rogers had gone upfield for a corner and clearly spoke out of turn to the referee Ken Salmon of Barnard. Rogers, the first of the afternoon's rush of bookings. A few minutes later, booking number two. Rashid Harcook's tattle on Trevor Tainton, instantly penalised by the referee. making his league debut for Notts County since his signing from Queen's Park Rangers in the summer and the debut was to be eventful. We rejoined the match action early in the second half. Ah, oh, Mabbott. He's not offside, Richie. But has he got the legs of O'Brien? He has. O'Brien opens the hands. The professional's approach had no alternative, so he would feel, other than to hold the shirt of Tom Ritchie, who had got behind him as Bristol finally beat the offside trap. The cynical foul punished by another booking, but Bristol City's free kick producing nothing. Referee Ken Salmon was now the busiest man on the field. Jeff Merrick's tackle from behind on Ian McCulloch was the next to earn a booking. The referee couldn't have been better positioned. For a brief spell, though, the football was really entertaining. Richie. Oh, it was nearly an own goal by Richards. The defender holds up his hands, acknowledging he got ahead to that, and Abramovich had to produce the best save of the match from his own player. Gow with the corner. Six Bristol City players in the box, but he couldn't find any of them. Now McCulloch, and Notts County is streaming forward, it's uh, four on four. Richards almost scored at the other end a moment ago. Hooks! Notts County were so quick to produce the counter-attack, almost catching Bristol City unawares. Hooks with the shot, scrambled away off the legs of Cashley. Mabbott, this is Whitehead. Gow, Tainton, Ritchie! Richie again, off the line by the defender.
Way O'Brien saved Notts County then. The narrowest of angles, but Ritchie managed to get the shot on goal. And O'Brien had to head it out from underneath the posts. But after that entertainment, the game really started to turn sour. Although David Rogers appeared to stamp there on Ian McCulloch, the free kick was actually given to Bristol City. But it wasn't long after that when Rogers was on his way to the dressing room. Now yeah, that's broken for McCulloch. Hasn't got anybody in support at the moment. David Rogers was booked in the first half. The referee immediately awarded the foul for that tackle. He reached to his pocket and realised that he'd already booked David Rogers. So for the second portion, David Rogers is sent off. Now, this is Hooks. Oh, he's made space. Masson arriving. That's it. Masson gets the goal eight minutes from time. But the man who did all the work was the man on the right, Paul Hooks, who beat the defender to make space and then beat him again. And Masson arrived to get the critical goal eight minutes from time. But after that, football and entertainment became secondary. This final flare-up is between Hooks and Gow, but watch Harcook arriving to intercede. Harcook booked in the first half, marking his league debut for Notts County by being sent off. A booking for Gow, and afterwards I asked Harcook exactly what had happened. Well, so I see what happened. All I rushed over was to separate the players. But as like, I see him throttling them by the throat, I just pushed his arms away, but a bit aggressively, so the referee thought. Who, who, who was throttling who? Uh, Jerry Gow was throttling poor looks. So I just went to run, I ran over to separate them. <laughs> Once he put his hand towards his pocket, I knew it was only the red card he was going to bring out. He wasn't, wasn't going to ask me autograph. The referee now says that he sent you off for violent conduct. Oh, well. That's what he says. Do the players want somebody to take control? when the game starts to deteriorate like that and football becomes secondary? Yeah, well, you, if you respect, you respect uh, referees that come out on the pitch and immediately take control. Like they accept no nonsense whatsoever. You respect that. But you, you, you didn't seem to do that. Apart from the sendings off, there was also the talking point of the professional foul by O'Brien, who held Ritchie when he might well have gone through the score. I mean, what's the professional approach to that? What do you think of it? Me, personally, I think it's terrible. Yeah. As a defender, uh, Brian, I obviously think, well, if I'm, all I'm going to get booked, all I'm going to do is get booked for saving a goal, then he doesn't, he wouldn't mind. But as an attacker, being robbed of a virtually a goal, I think it's terrible. And what should the punishment be? Because there are suggestions that it perhaps it should be a, a penalty or a free kick on goal. I think a free kick on goal would be a good thing. Just outside the box. I mean, not 12 yards. I mean, not 12 yards like a penalty, but 18 yards, just a straight shot at goal. Well, in case you wanted further confirmation of the point I made after our main match, it was there at Ashton Gate. Too much unnecessary needle between the players, strong disciplinary action applied by the referee, but with little understanding of each other's point of view. Well, now let's take another look at the second division, be it a brief one, where Derby County, second in the table, met Wrexham, poised around the halfway mark. And I can tell you there's a goal scored, which is well worth a second look. Your commentator, as we join the game in the first half, is Barry Davis. Foul. Vinter. Classic ball inside the back. It happened to be Osgood. This is Edwards. Hannah 
fine ball by McNeil. Just crooked his arm in order to be able to take the ball. Buckley. Bailey. Oh, that's a great little inside pass. And Barry Powell unable to take it, but applause all around the ground. Really was a lovely first time ball, which was just a little bit too square for Powell to take. Edwards and Vinter, the two at the top of the picture as we look. Vinter makes the first run. Edwards the second. Uh, a rather extravagant piece of getting his body between opponent and the ball by uh, Swindlehurst concedes the free kick. Jones loses. And it was Pete Oscar who rescued him. Came in such confident manner, the goalkeeper. Had it, but somehow managed to lose it. And Osgood just kicked it up in the air and over the top. That was the last moment of alarm for Roger Jones in the first half. And we pick up the game now in the second half. Buckley. One back by Emerson. Good use of both feet again. Good determination from him as well. It's Skivington. Up comes Buckley. Emerson. Caradus. having perhaps their best spell of the match. And here's Bailey, and that's a goal. No, it's not. No, it's not. Put up, given against Bailey. Referee with arm aloft, indicating a dangerous kick by Alan Bailey, and the goal does not stand. Dixon want to make a substitution. And it's Dixie McNeil, who hurt his foot in the first half, who goes off, to be replaced by Alan Hill. Givington. Davis. Sigelski. Sivington again. Started well, but has been quiet for a long spell. Buckley available. So is Emson. Wrexham pushing out. Ramage. doing very well to collect that and Powell and finally touched in by Swindlehurst no off the line by Hill and here's Buckley and the whistle goes for the trip but there must be some sort of record I think that was Alan Hill's first touch of the ball and he cleared off his line to deny Swindlehurst The near things are at the same goal that had the worries in the first half, but now, of course, defended by Di Davis and not by Roger Jones. Steve Emery. Oh, he hit it well. And he wasn't too far away either. Game has certainly swung Derby County's way. And they have another free kick. 
kick against Edwards. It's Caradas. Cartwright. Sutton coming behind Cartwright. And Edwards shot off! Oh! That is a marvellous goal! No wonder Roger Jones looks like that. He read that and absolutely buried it. The goal coming very, very much against the run of play in the second half. But he hit that so well. And Wrexham have a lead of one to nothing. And that's the way the match ended. But what a goal that was. Uh, I expect we should be seeing that a few times in the coming weeks.